Hi, it's uh, Sam for Digital Meet, and today we're going to be looking at a new enhancement for Cinema 4D R16 called the Mesh Check. Now, I've made this object here, which is a testament to bad geometry, and <clears throat> we're going to check the mesh to see if it's good or not. So if you've ever made a model and you have a problem and you don't know why, this is a good good way of tracking down what that problem is. So if we select our object, um, go into mode, modeling, and then we have this tab here called mesh checking. And here it says enable mesh check, turn that on, and it's lit up like Christmas because of the problems in it. So let's just go through these one by one. So the first one on the list is isolated points. In Cinema 4D, when you delete polygons, it leaves the points behind. And I can demonstrate this by creating a plane, moving it up to the side, make it editable, select all of its polys, control A, poly mode, control A, delete all those polys, and it looks like it's gone, but you can see the plane object is still in the object manager. So if we go to point mode, we can see all the points have been left behind and you can select them. Um, <clears throat> now this may seem a little bit silly, other programs don't do that. So I think 3ds Max, when you delete all the polys of an object, it deletes the object. But there may be a case where you want to delete a load of polys, but um, still have the points there for reference to, I don't know, say you're going to reorganize your mesh. Uh, in that case, it becomes very handy. So now we know that, let's get rid of the plane. Go back to our cube object. So select that. I have to go back to mode, modeling, and then mesh checking. I'm just going to lock this so if I click off or another tool, um, the information here at the bottom doesn't disappear. So I isolated verts. There they are. It's got a count of 25 here. If you uh, look at that, uh, you've got a select button. So what it will do is select all your verts, and uh, there we go. They're all selected, we can delete them, and now we've got a count of zero. So next is complex poles. Now where's the problem here? Right, as you can see, we've got this purple highlight, the colors here, you can actually change this to anything you like. Um, so po complex poles, you'll notice that underneath we've got an edge count and we've got a count of six. Now this may not necessarily be a problem in your mesh, um, but in this case, uh, these edges here are pointless and if you wanted to keep your model uh, saying quads um, you know you wanted four-sided polygons well then this would be a good way of identifying where a problem may may lie now like I said it may not be a problem so you may want to push this edge count up and you'll notice that once we get past eight it's nine the problem disappears so you can actually choose you know what you want your threshold to be so in this case they're not needed, so how would we fix that? We'd select these edges. I'm just shift clicking to choose multiple edges and then right click, dissolve, and there's no longer a problem. There's a count of zero. So next on the list is non-manifold. So if we select that, where's our problem? Oh look, we've got this big red line round round this. Um Basically what I did was I selected a load of polygons on top of my object and extruded out. But I, the, I had an option enabled in the extrude tool, a little tick box called en enable caps. So what happened was it created a load of polygons underneath here. And now the problem with this is you've got this polygon connected to this edge. You also have this polygon connected to this edge and you also have a third polygon connected to this edge underneath and to demonstrate uh, demonstrate why this would may be a problem or would be a problem we can select this edge right click and extrude uh, not extrude sorry bevel now it's pretty safe to say that you would not want that and that's why a non manifold edge is a problem so what we do is we'd go into polygon mode, um, get our select tool, go underneath, select these polygons, 
and delete. And now you can see the non-manifold edge is gone and we've got a count of zero. But it has created isolated vertices. So as before, we have a count of nine now, so we can press select and then delete those points and everything's good. So what's next on the list? Boundary edges. Basically, if you're making a model that um, has got a hole in it, you can now see the back face of these polygons. So this is the normal direction, and this would be the, the back face. So if you were take, to take this into a game engine, for instance, Unity, you'd be able to see straight through this. In fact, we can do that in Cinema by adding a uh, display tag to our object. I'm just going to turn this lock off so we can actually get to it and then go down to back face culling, turn that on and you can see that that may be a problem. So let's get rid of this display tag, go back to our mesh checking and lock that. So there may be a few ways that you, you may just want to close that hole up, but if you did actually want the geometry to have a hole in it, you'd have to make it a closed loop. So what I'd do is probably, um, well, for now we can just, we can close the polygon hole and see if that, and it did. So the boundary edges are no longer highlighted and we've got a count of zero here. Bad polygons is the next one on the list. So let's turn that on. We've got two bad polygons for, in, for, uh, for this and they're highlighted here. Now, why would that be happening? Well, it's usually because points are sharing the same space. So if I grab this and then move it, no. If I can grab another one, there we go. So these points were, I think I've got snapping on. Yeah, let's turn that off. So these points were actually occupying the same space or they were on top of each other. So if you just move move them out away from each other, that sorts a problem out. That should be around there and that should be around here. And again, we've got a count of zero now. Non-planar polygons. If we turn that on and this is where it is. Now, again, this may not necessarily be a problem. If you have a very complex model, you're not always going to have uh, planar polygons. And you can actually choose what the threshold of that is here. So we keep pushing this up. And once it gets past a certain degrees, the highlight disappears because it's not within the threshold. So if we uh, okay. So if we put this back down to zero, you can see that that's a uh, that's a problem for this mesh. Again, it may not be a problem, but in this case, it would be. So if I take this point and see that what its uh, Z position is, I can actually copy that, then select this point and copy it into here and enter snaps it back and the problem has been solved so <clears throat> that's basically what the mesh checker does um really useful um for seeing if there's any problems with your mesh in general in a quick timely manner i mean <clears throat> without that you could be searching around your model for quite a while trying to find out why you, you know when you drop it in a subdivision surface it doesn't it doesn't look right or there's pinching or something along those lines. So I hope that's been helpful. Um, thanks. Bye.